So this is Ford Brewer with PrevMed, Heart Attack, Stroke, Cancer, Disability Prevention. <clears throat> a topic that I'm very passionate came up in a series of meetings last week. It was plant-based diet. It was due to, it was tripped off by the uh, recent movie, What the Health. And um, I'll do a video on the movie, What the Health, a little bit later, I think, because, again, of my passion around this plant-based diet issue. Uh, one of the things that's, I, that's happened with me over the past couple of years is that I've become insulin resistant. And so I've had to add um, carbohydrates and I focused on uh, starches into my, con into my list of concerns. I've also professionally begun seeing diabetic patients or in patients that didn't know they had insulin resistance. So I've had to start looking at, again, carbs. Now, <clears throat> this, is a, this can be a confusing issue. You've got movies like What the Health saying anything plant-based is good for you. Then you've got uh, books, and I'm sure there'll be a movie somewhere about Fat Chance is Sugar Toxic. Uh, Robert Lustig wrote that. He's a very good endocrinologist out at uh, UC San Francisco. Um, and again, he keeps preaching the, the gospel of getting sugars out of the diet. One of the major focus points he has on sugars is a very, very critical point. A lot of his patients come in drinking. One of them, for example, was a, what, I think a six or ten year old boy, and his mom didn't speak uh, English. And he, the boy was obese, very obese. And in doing a history, Dr. Lustig found that the child was drinking a, a gallon of orange juice a day. We'll talk about juices a little bit later in this video, but liquid fructose is the worst challenge, the heaviest challenge we can give the beta cells in our pancreas. When we do an oral glucose tolerance test, that's what we use, liquid, liquid fructose, 75 grams of it. You don't have quite that many grams in a glass of, uh, of orange juice, um, but you certainly have more than that in a gallon of orange juice if you're, if you're doing that every day. So here's the issue. We, <clears throat> and here's where some of this gets confusing. There's a, there's a theory uh, revolving around the hormones of, uh, of hunger, and there's been a lot of focus over the past decade or two about uh, hormones like leptin and ghrelin. Leptin is made by the fat cells, and it decreases appetite. Ghrelin is made by the stomach, and it increases appetite. Insulin impacts both of those. Now, <clears throat> when you look at ghrelin, the hunger hormone, and you do a glucose challenge, you get a spike about an hour or two after, um, get, after taking the glucose challenge. But if you do protein or fat challenges, you don't get that spike of ghrelin afterwards. So that is the essence and the science uh, behind the hormonal theory of getting fat. Those people, um, Robert Lustig would be one. Um, uh, oh, the, the banner carrier would be Gary Taubes, who wrote Why We Get Fat and What to Do About It. Those folks would say, look, carbs are not bad just for people with insulin resistance. They're bad for everybody because they cause us to get fat, and getting fat causes diabetes. Well, there's no question that obesity is a major risk factor for diabetes. In fact, there are uh, two major risk factors. One is obesity, the other is age. There are several other risk factors as well, but uh, bottom line, the vast majority of folks that are coming through my office that have insulin resistance are, are coming through because, have it because of their age. There is a, uh, an epidemic of obesity, which is in turn leading to um, type 2 diabetes. In fact, many uh, teenage populations have shown a prevalence of, type, or of insulin resistance of up to 15%.
that is obesity. Now, there's been a lot of focus on, uh, on this video, what the health. Mercola, who, who I often, very often, disagree with for having bad science, um, he's getting on board and criticizing what the health and saying, look, they're not saying anything about sugar. They're saying sugar's okay. Well, I, this is one time where I agree with Mercola that, yes, uh, that's a problem. You, we do not. We shouldn't say sugar is okay. Sugar actually does have some risk. Far more if you're, if you're insulin resistant. Now, here's where we get into some of the real nuts and bolts behind the problem here. Look, if you look up uh, carbohydrates and vegetables or, or uh, plant-based carbohydrates, look what you see. Asparagus, legumes, and believe it or not, legumes do have a significant load. Potatoes, for sure. Uh, figs, fruits, bananas. Wait a minute. Let's talk about some of these. So <clears throat> this actually, this next label actually helps us get a little bit more focused. Fruits versus vegetables. The fruits have more simple sugars in them, and the vegetables have more complex carbohydrates. If you're insulin resistant, uh, it doesn't matter a whole lot. Um, a sugar is a sugar, and the, your body can break it down, break down the complex carbohydrates very quickly. So over the next few minutes, I'm going to go through some um, food labels and some foods. This is this uh, timing of uh, discussions around what the health actually came at a good time for me to do this video because of my family. My son came down and visited, and we've got a lot of unhealthy carbs around here uh, because that's what he's into right now uh, and has been. So <clears throat> this is a food label. As you can see, a couple of things that you want to look at. Serving size. So 1.5 cups of grapes. Grapes is a fruit, so they're healthy, right? Well, no, not if you're diabetic. They're like orange juice. 24 grams of sugar and really more of a liquid form of sugar in 90 calories worth of grapes. That's about a cup and a half. How about um, another surprise we got there was asparagus. You saw the picture of asparagus on uh, plant-based carbs. Well, look at this. It's, asparagus is not that big of a deal from a carbs perspective. Out, uh, in fact, very few calories, 10 calories for um, a quarter cup of asparagus and total carbs, two grams. Now, <clears throat> here's where you get into some more confusion. I had a very good prevention-oriented a uh, public speaker friend of mine who's a dietitian who said, I don't really get what you're talking about with carbs, Ford. What are you talking about? Um, uh, net carbs? I won't get into that today, but yes, there is some, com some uh, component around net carbs. If you look at the uh, vegetables like broccoli and asparagus, they do have carbs, but they're very, very low carbs, and you don't even have to worry about... Where are the carbs on this? You, oh, three grams. You don't have to worry about carbs with something like asparagus and broccoli. You do have to worry about carbs with grapes, apples, things like that. Well, are there other fruits that, um, that have lower carb count? For sure. <clears throat> Blueberries. Actually, of the, of the fruits, there are maybe three that are uh, not so bad for diabetics, but, you, but not so bad is a relative term. This is uh, blueberries. We have those. I eat them, but I don't eat them a lot. And here's why. So, a quarter cup of uh, blueberries, 20 calories, that's not bad, but still 5 grams of carbohydrates. 
And again, they're like, the carbohydrates are like grapes. They're, it's, it's a juicy uh, pulp fruit and it goes straight into your bloodstream. Kaboom, with a lot of sugar challenge there. So, <clears throat> what are some other um, plants that might be good for you that don't have a whole lot of carbs? Well, holy guacamole. That's a great way to have it. I have all, often liked um, guacamole, but it's as I got into plant-based foods, but it's hard to keep them around. Well, with this, there's a company called Holy Guacamole that's found a way to keep it around, keep it fresh for a long time by packaging. Now, <clears throat> and if you want to call that processed, be my guest. Uh, you still have five grams and a hundred grams of calories. Um, but again, that starts to get into that glycemic index kind of thing. Uh, avocados, I don't think anybody's going to argue with you that avocados are a glycemic or high carb food. Now, <clears throat> it's getting on, the time is getting on. I'm going to do another video which, where we talk a little bit more deeply about other foods, other plant-based foods, and what they mean in terms of carbs, what they mean in terms of health. But the bottom line is this. Um, <clears throat> you get a lot of sugars in, in plant-based food, just like you get a lot of fats and oils in plant-based food. Uh, although there's some evidence that um, sugars make you fat, there's also evidence that eating fats make you fat. The reality is, uh, I, I think there's some case either way, and I'm not going to argue that point very much. What I am going to argue is being obese is a major risk factor for insulin resistance. It's also a major risk factor for dying early. Uh, diabetic, uh, insulin resistance or being diabetic is a major risk factor for uh, heart disease, cancer, stroke, and the disabilities associated with these, as well as um, Alzheimer's. So, <clears throat> Let's watch our mac macronutrients. Let's realize that, yes, plant-based may be a great way to go. But if you say plant-based, you could be talking about, uh, you know, Coke or Pepsi or tea, which has, what, 30 grams of sugar in a liquid slam to your blood. So it's a little bit deeper than plant-based versus, uh, versus animal.